Wow. I can say that backwards. Wow. I can say it upside down. Mom, what a great day to be in church. Are you glad you're in church today? Hey, you know what I love? That 8.6 miles up the hill is our South Hill campus. Let's give him love from downtown. Mwah. Hey, uh, Lisa Shaw is uh, watching us and she's there at downtown or up South Hill campus. Lisa, thank you for serving so faithful every week. I just wanted to just, I was thinking about you and praying for you today. Um, I know Danny Altizer, Danny gave a little wave, South Hill. They were worshiping with a bunch of guys in his house last night. I love how our men get together and just worship. I think it was over Conor McGregor. <laughs> you see, if there's blood and violence, men worship like never before. <laughs> hey, it's Vision Weekend, yo. And uh, the Bible says that without vision, people perish. I like one of the translations I read that said, without direction, people cast off restraint. Isn't that interesting? That if you don't have something pulling you forward, something is going to push you from behind. And here's what I know about driving in the snow. You better have a front wheel drive. Because <laughs> the rear wheel drive, I don't care if you have 700 horses under the hood, baby, you'll be in a ditch. <laughs> you need something pulling you rather than something pushing you. And that choice is up to you. And that choice is going to help you be aided if you have vision. Are you ready for some vision? Yeah. Mikey, you ready for some vision? Come on. All right, baby. Every year, uh, by the way, how rude, how rude of me. We have like about uh, six or 700 people watching online, literally all over the world. Can you welcome all of our online people watching? Um, this just breaks my heart. Uh, George and Sharon Eide are down in Phoenix. <laughs> And it's raining. I really do feel, no, honest, George, I feel super bad for you. Um, I, I, I want it to be, you're my brother, I love you. So, um, do you catch the sarcasm in my voice? Okay, so, every year we get a prophetic word from the Lord to uh, help us with our sermon prep by the way we lead our church, our families, our single life, our dating life, um, our, our career. And this year, the Lord has given us this word, uh, one voice. You see, in 2020, I, I want to submit to you for your consideration that there were multiple voices that were competing for our attention and affection. We had political voices shouting. We had news media outlets declaring. We had uh, our vocational uh, voices uh, uttering. We had our, our relational dynamics sh uh, screaming or whispering. We had voices and spinning our head and our guts in so many directions that sometimes we just felt dissettled because of so many voices. Do you know what the Holy Spirit is telling us right now for 2021? One voice. Right. Everyone say one voice. one voice. And that one voice is not us. Everybody say one voice. one voice. South Hill, did you notice that it sounded like one voice? No, no. This is not a collective. This is singular. The voice of God. Yeah. That's it. Now, because we have one voice, God has given us this direction uh, of things to facilitate that prophetic word. Are you ready for the vision for 2021? Yeah. All right, here we go. If you're ready for 21, uh, give me a whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, I heard the South Hill down the valley. I love it. Vision weekend, here we go. It's super exciting. It's one of our most come to the Jesus weekends. Uh, but here we go. On February 5th, we have our marriage conference. Yeah. Now, uh, if you're married, give me a little wave. If you used to be, give me a wave. Don't you wish you had marriage conference? So, <laughs> here's the deal. This is not like an elective of your senior year. I need a humanities class. I'll take basket leafing to get my diploma. Not an elective, compulsory. If you're married, you're signing up in the lobbies because God wants your foundation to go to the earth because you need to weather this thing called life. We're going to help you do that. Um, March 18th, here's what I want you to do. Put your mouthpiece in, your, buckle your chin strap, and get ready to rock. Because we're going to have something called Encounter Week. Now, we've never had this in the 23-year history of our church. We've never done this. I like firsts, don't you? Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night. Uh, we have Elevation Worship coming in. We have, we have, no, no, no. We have Bethel Worship coming in. 
No, 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 no. We have Pastor Rodriguez, Benny Perez. We have hitters all over the country. And you know why they're coming to this little bitty church of 3,000 people in the Northwest? Because they got nothing else to do. Um, see, God arranged COVID so we can get them. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to have a hold down, yo. You get down the fiddle and you get down the bow. Kick off your shoes and you throw them in the floor. Dance in the kitchen till the morning light. Louisiana Saturday night. We're going to have a good time. So, and here's what we're going to do. No boundaries. No clock. We're going to let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit do. You're going to love it. Then we have April 3rd and 4th Easter coming up. Do you realize... Do you realize Easter is like eight weeks? Eight weeks. Last year we got ripped off. Easter was in your living room. That's bogus. Somebody better get some Vaseline and a shoehorn because we're going to get people in this building worshiping Jesus. So we have, we have service times all over the place. So we'll have room for about 6,000 people with all of our campuses and all of our services. Um, April 29th and 30th, Darling Conference. Hello, my darlings. That's for our women, in case you didn't know. Uh, everyone say boom. boom. July 19th, 27th, boom camp for all of our little ones. Hey, here's what we believe. If you reach a generation, you don't have to rescue them. Right on the heels of that, July 25th, UG, United Generation, our 6th through 12th graders. Come on. We, my life was changed and altered forever at a youth camp. You need, parents, it's not even an option. Would you like to go to UG camp? You tell them, this is what you will do. If you want to live in my house and eat free food, you will go there. And then they'll come back and you'll have this amazing kid. August 20th through the 21st, we have our Sentinel Retreat, which is our, which is our guy's getaway. You know, again, we're going to go shoot stuff and watch stuff bleed, and, you know, we get t- close to God that way. Uh, here's what's really cool. This is going to blow your mind. Um, do you know what I forgot? To, uh, I'll come back to it. I'm going to say the best for last. Um, uh, August, or I'm sorry, October, last week of October, first week of November, uh, I am taking the church to Israel. So we will be going to the Holy Land, 90 people, that's it. That's two full buses because I just want to keep it intimate where Tina and I can walk you through. Now, here's what's really cool about this. I will be offering doctoral level classes, three classes before we go. So that I will give you historical background, historical narrative, current political reality, biblical content, and references. Three classes. Anybody that's not going to Israel can still come to the class. So I think, up at, I think we're going to do that up at South Hill. So you look around there, guys. I'm sure all the curtains are pushed back. Um, all It's going to be packed in there, I'm certain, because we're going to be talking about the history of the Word of God. Because I think in 2021, like never before, we need to not only know the Word of God, we need to know the Word of God. Right? The Greek word for know, knowledge, is gnosko. That means synaptic activity. The, but the Greek word for heart is kardia. And God wants to get the Word from our head to our heart. So we're going to take Gnosko and Cardia and make them be friends. Going to Israel. Uh, December 14th and 15th, uh, Emmanuel Productions, our Christmas production. We're going to add a night because it's so blown up last year. We just kind of like, ah, throw two in there. Now, uh, in in March, on March, middle of March, you may not know this, but we are, if you're newer, you wouldn't know this, but we are one church, several locations. We are building our Bonnie Lake campus. March, we start pushing dirt. In less than 12 weeks, the bulldozers come, baby. And we're going to... Here, here's what's cray-cray about this, yo. Here's, oh, hey, my... Is there... It weighs so much, I just push this, the thing down. The vision, not me. Um, the last time a church was built in the plateau was 51 years ago. No church has been built on the plateau. 70,000 people live up there. The biggest church up there is us in a tent meeting on 40 acres. And we're going to blow the devil's doors off. Can't wait to do it. There is your vision for 2021. Um, It's exciting. It's exciting. It's worth fighting for. God is going to do something amazing. uh, Do you want to be part of it? Are you going to be a spectator or a participant? That's up to you. Because this church called Motion ain't no cruise ship, baby. It's a battleship. 
Everybody's got a weapon. Everybody's got a job. Ain't nobody going to be sitting on the bench going, I'll just have a sample of the ice cream, please. I'll pass it. This is the buffet church. I want the good yummy. I don't want that. No, no. This is a battleship, not a cruise ship. Yeah. Everyone say this out loud. I am, I am a candidate, candidate to be blessed, to be blessed. By, God. by God. That's true. This is part four of our series entitled Voice Lessons. Now, if you're new and didn't get the content, we have it on YouTube and other platforms on our website. I encourage you to catch up because what I've been teaching the church over the last three weeks is how to hear the voice of God and distinguish between your own head and God's voice. Now, today we're going to be looking at a man by the name of Jonah. How rude of me yet again. See, my ADD lets me go back and forth between this stuff because I have a great synaptic activity. Look, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Alpha Centauri. I can do that and come back and here I go. Uh, Up on South Hill, those online here... uh, If this is your first, second, or third time, would you give us a little wave so we can welcome you proper? Come on, would you welcome people first, second, third time? Welcome, welcome. Welcome over here. Welcome back there. Welcome. Blue sweater. I see you. There you go. Ah, I see you, hon. Up in the balcony. Good. Up at South Hill. Those online, chat in. Tell them your first time. Uh, We are going to be learning about a man by the name of Jonah. Everyone say Jonah. Such a dope name, yo. I'd name my kid that. Jonah. Is anybody named Jonah in the house? Any Jonas? Do you know a Jonah? Okay, Jonah's cool, all right. Not Jonas, brothers, all you heartthrob people. (laughs) I want to go so many directions right now, but decorum forbids. So, Jonah. Jonah is prophesying in the 7th century BC. I want to give you a little backdrop of the when and the what so you understand the why. Jonah is a man, and he has a job. Hey, if you're in construction, give me a little wave. If you're in education, give me a little wave. If you're in sales, give me a little wave. Hey, uh, if you're a stay-at-home parent, give me a little wave. If you're looking for a gig, give me a wave. And you want a job, give me a wave, (laughs) right? When we have a job, it's our job to do our job. Isn't that deep? Pastor, how do you come by such deep wisdom? Well, here's what I know. Those folks that don't get wisdom is dumb. So when we have a job, it's our job to do our job. And Jonah had a job. Jonah's job was to speak for God to the people. That was his job. (laughs) Now, at this point in in 752 BC, the nation of Israel, 12 tribes, had a civil war, and they separated. 10 of the 12 tribes went 68 miles north to the city of Samaria, and two of the tribes stayed south in Jerusalem. Now you have the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom they be monotheistic, worshiping the one true God. The northern kingdom, yeah, they began to drift because they didn't have good voice lessons. They got into polytheism, worshiping many gods. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. I'm not polytheistic. Oh, really? Where do you spend your time? Where do you spend your money? It shows you what you worship. The northern kingdom began to drift. Now, The Assyrians, uh, those nasty Assyrians, whenever God's people historically began to get off track, do you know how God got them back on track? He would send conquering companies to whoop their little behind. Yeah, he sent the Egyptians to discipline the Hebrews. Then he sent the Babylonians to discipline the Hebrews. Then God sent the Assyrians. You see, because here's what God said. As long as you obey me, wherever you go, there will be an umbrella of protection for you. You obey me, wherever you go. You can stay underneath my umbrella, Ella, Ella, A, A, A. You can stay. But you want to drift out? No umbrella. So the Assyrians, they were the most ruthless oppressors Israel has ever encountered, including the Nazi Germany. Including the Nazi Germany era. The Assyrians were the most ruthless. You see, they would steal the children of the Jews. They'd go into, they'd come from, they would come from the 700 miles from the east, come to Samaria and steal the children. They would rape the women to impregnate them to build their armed forces. They would murder the men. They would steal all the harvest and the grain. They would turn them to become polytheistic, worshiping demonic deities. 
Those were the Assyrians. Now God comes to Jonah and here's what he says. Jonah, you have a job. (laughs) And your job is to go to the great city of Nineveh and preach to it, telling them to repent and turn to me. Now Nineveh is a city of about 250,000 people, about the size of T-Town. Those of you that are watching online, Google Tacoma, you'll see the beautiful city of Nineveh, about population size. So, of course, it's Jonah's job to go to Nineveh, north by northwest, and preach to them. But Jonah goes, I can't go for that. No, no, can't do. Going south by southeast, 1,300 miles the other direction to a city called Tarshish. Now, I want to show you this little map, uh, this little video, because it's going to help give you some context about when and where. Now, there's Jerusalem. They're up 60 miles north in the city of Syria. He comes down to Joppa on the seacoast and and gets on a boat. Now, he's supposed to go 750 miles to Nineveh, way up in the north uh, by northwest. But instead, he gets on a boat in Joppa and starts sailing across the Med to Tarshish, which is modern day Spain. (laughs) Did I mention he had a job? Why didn't he do it? Why is it that we don't do what God tells us? Why is it we don't do what God tells us? See, here's what I know. When we don't do what God tells us to do, inevitably our life becomes do-do. Let me say that again. When we don't do what God tells us to do, inevitably our life becomes do-do. Hey, if your marriage ain't right, if you're in do-do, it's probably because you ain't doing what God told you to do. In your single life, if you're all over the map, depressed, discouraged, and getting cheated on and getting disparaged, and, and life has no hope and no light and no light, probably because you're in doo-doo because you're not doing what he told you to do. If your business ain't working right, you get it. Now, why didn't Jonah want to go to Nineveh? Because Nineveh was the capital city of Assyria. And God's, and Jonah's be like, Jonah be like thinking, I know you. I know you, Jehovah. You're going to go on up there to Nineveh and you're going to forgive those people. You're going to bless those people. I want you to send a nuclear weapon and make a crater in the earth where the city used to be. Smoke it. Send some Sodom and Gomorrah on those people. So Jonah says, I ain't going to do it. Find somebody else. So instead of going north by northwest, he goes south by southeast. Tired of living in doo-doo? Then you need to do what God tells you to do. So here's some things we need to know about the voice of the Lord. Here's the first thing. The initial voice. Everyone say initial voice. The initial, the first time. The first time voice of God is seldom, if ever, indirect. Seldom, if ever. Seldom, if ever, is the initial voice of God indirect. I love that about God. God speaks directly. God speaks plainly. God makes no inferences. God gives no hints. God doesn't cough and turn. God doesn't raise his eyebrows. God doesn't make any kind of weird look on his face. God speaks directly initially. Check this out now. The Lord gave this message to son of Amity, Jonah. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked the people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction. You understand now, right? So you might have read the book of Jonah a thousand times but never known the backstory. But now you get it, right? You want vengeance and judgment and reciprocity to come on your enemies. And you know the nature of your, that God is so good and loving and gracious. You don't want to be forgiven. And you don't want to have a hand in helping those wicked people get helped. It'd be kind of like you know, somebody going like, go to Adolf Hitler. After he killed 7 million people. And just tell him about the love of God and maybe he'll turn from his wicked ways. No, let's just cut him in half. Let's just burn him in oil. Let's not do that. Jonah's running. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found, aren't you glad I showed you the video now? 
Got it in your head? Went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. I'm sailing away. 80s rock, Google it. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. Yeah, good luck with that. Have you ever noticed that you can't outrun the long arm of the Lord? It don't matter where you go. It don't matter what disguise you wear, how you pierce yourself, tat yourself, color up, put on a hat backwards, put it sideways, put it front, change your whatever. You can't outrun the long arm of the Lord. Wherever you go, there you are, and so is he. <laughs> I love that. He would try to get away, but check out God. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm. Everyone say violent storm. See, we're not talking about rollers here. We're talking about a hurricane wind. Now that we know that hurricanes be measured by wind speed, right? To become a hurricane, it starts at, a, at 75 miles an hour. That's class one. It goes up to class four, which can be measured at 150 miles an hour. So we can extrapolate and pull out because of the nature of the wind and the waves and the terror of the sailors. They were probably in a class form hurricane, winds blowing about 150 miles an hour on the open ocean. Caused a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Um, do you like my outfit? Last night, it was so cool. I think Crystal was up there at South Hill. Crystal, I love your little daughter. She's like so cute. Crystal's daughter's about nine beautiful blonde hair, cute as a button, third grader. She came up to me and she goes, Pastor, you be so stylish. <laughs> I am? Yes, I love your outfit. I was bitter. And here's why. Because at 3 p.m. yesterday afternoon in my closet was this outfit, everything I'm wearing, hanging on a hanger. <laughs> Laid out for me by my wife. I went to my wife and said, sweetheart, I'm, not a ch I'm a grown man. I've been dressing myself for five decades. I don't need you to lay out my clothes like I'm a toddler. I don't need granimals matching with little short and top matching tags. She said, sweetheart, do you remember when you walked out of the closet three weeks ago? I said, exactly. I said, and I said, yes, I recall it. I asked you how you thought I looked. She goes, do you remember what I did? I said, yes, you raised your eyebrows. I thought that was a compliment. <laughs> she said, sweetheart, when my eyebrows touch my hairline, that's not a compliment. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I gave you another chance. You did it again. <laughs> Last week, you walked out of the closet like you turned off the lights and dressed by Braille. <laughs> she goes, sweetheart, whenever you look poorly, it reflects poorly on me. I'm like, how do you figure? She goes, every other woman in the church is looking like, uh-huh. His wife got no class letting him be out of the house like that. She goes, that ends today. Why didn't you say something? She goes, I hinted as best I could. I have another issue. I, I guess apparently it's, it's, it's socially... The social moray frowns upon you uh, chewing with your mouth open. I guess that's a thing. Some people just like want to just like carve their eyes out when they see people doing that. I happen to chew with my mouth open. I enjoy my food. I want everyone else to enjoy it with me. I was having dinner with my wife and she was like clearing her throat profusely. I said, would you like a glass of water? She's banging her cup on the table. Do you have a muscle spasm, honey? What's wrong with your arm? You're driving me crazy! Did I mention there's a marriage conference coming? Yeah. Here's what I told my sweet wife. With men, hints don't work. All the men in the house have said... Say it! Just say it! Yeah, you dress like an idiot and you're chewing like a cow. Knock it off. Okay. I'm good. Aren't you glad God doesn't hint with us? Aren't you glad he doesn't dance around it? 
Jonah, son of Amity, get your hind parts northwest. Jonah heard the voice and plainly said, nope. See, the initial voice of God is seldom indirect. Number two, know this about the voice of God. The voice of God gets us to essentials. The voice of God gets us to essentials. Do you know what we are wrapped in as a human race? A whole lot of things that don't mean squadoosh. We have anxiety and worry. We're medicated or we go get something to medicate us. Because we have so many things that are weighing us down. They're just weighing us down. I like what Jesus said. Jesus said in Matthew, I believe it's 28. He said, no, Matthew 20. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy loads. He said, take my load upon you and learn from me. For my load is easy and my burden is light, i.e. Everything he's given you the assignment to carry, he'll give you the strength to carry. Everything you pick up on your own, he's going to let you do alone. And we are so weighted down. We are, we, are, we are riding so low. The burden is so great that we haven't looked up and seen the horizon since March. I mean, I mean we're navel gazing like through life. Hello. What are you looking at? My navel. Who's your favorite Disney character? Eeyore. Just gazing at my navel. Navel gazing. I have no life. Navel gazing. We're carrying such heavy loads. We're, can I just tell you right now, if your dating life and if your single life is really jacking you up and you're living in the land of doo-doo, do you know what? That dating life, that dating person that you're dating, they don't belong to you. They belong to the Lord. Those of you that are married, oh, my ring broke. I, I normally, I wasn't getting hit on or anything, but my, my, my ring broke. Because I had that, like, the plastic, like, $5 ring. You know, I just go through rings, like, every six months when they break. But anyway, went on. It doesn't break covenant. It's just, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> that person you're married to, yeah, they're not yours. They belong to the Lord. Those kids that are yours, got kids? They ain't your kids. They belong to the Lord. That whip you drove in on, ain't your whip. That belongs to God. Clothes you're wearing, not yours. Bank account, not yours. Psalm 24, 1 says this. The earth is the Lord's. Psalm 24, 1. It says the earth, not a piece of the rock, honey, the whole thing. The earth is the Lord's and all it contains and all who dwell within it. Everyone say all. All. You know, it's crazy. I looked up that verse in Hebrew, that word in Hebrew. Very interesting takedown. I looked up the word all. Do you know what it means? All. (laughs) See, the voice of God, he's going to get you to the essentials. What is it you're supposed to carry? You know what you're supposed to carry? The love of God, it. Say this out loud. Say, I am a God carrier. I love the, the, when Paul is writing um, to, to the church uh, in Ephesus. He says, do you not know that we carry, sorry, the church of Corinthian, in Corinth. He says, we carry the precious gift of God in jars of clay. See, God sees us as jars of clay. He knows we're a bit fragile. You don't got to be tough and wired and dialed and chiseled. Ah, Christian, ah, I'm so strong. I have no fear. No, no, we're a jar of clay. It's all right. But the only thing you're supposed to be carrying is the love of God. That's it. Take my load upon you. Learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors. Everyone say desperate sailors. See, anybody that's in the Navy, you would never hear anybody that's on a ship or ever been on board a ship, if you see people geeking out, you're thinking like, yeah, maybe you got to join the army. I'm not, you know, casting shade in the army. It's just that they're on land. <laughs> but if you're afraid of the water and afraid of the, if you're in the Navy, you just roll with 20 foot rollers. You roll with them. You just get your sea legs. But, but here are these experienced, seasoned sailors. And it says they're desperate. Why? Because they know the drill. When you're in 150 mile an hour winds and you're in a 100 foot boat and you're weighted down with material, you're going under unless you take measures. Check it out. They shouted to their lowercase g gods for help and threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. Why in the world would you do that? Because that, that great big ship 
was riding super low in the water. And here's what they had to do. All those bags of grain, overboard. All that heavy farming equipment, overboard. All the guns and cannonballs, overboard. They needed to get that ship up out of the water to get over the wind and the waves. They thought it better to be bankrupt, cashless, and have no ROI than to exchange their lives for a maybe. Here's my question to y'all. How low you riding? How low you riding? But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep in the hold. Isn't it great when you have the love of God in your heart in the middle of the storm? <laughs> sleep apnea, here I come. <laughs> Doesn't matter how bad the wind and waves are, you're just sleeping with peace. So the captain, not the lieutenant, not the the. The E6, not the corporal, not the, the captain. I don't know what the regs and ranks are in the Navy. Sorry, I apologize for those in the Navy. The captain went down after him. How can you sleep at a time like this? He shouted. Get up and pray to your lowercase g, God. Maybe he will pay attention and spare our lives. Then the, now here's what happened. There's probably a crew of about 40 carrying for the ship about 150 a crew of 40, and here's what they did. They had these dice, a cup of dice, and they would roll the dice to determine whose fault it was for the storm. The crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the lowercase g gods and caused the terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. I mean, have you ever been to Vegas? Nobody's admitting, uh, yeah. Playing craps, if you get seven, no bueno. You're crapped out. Living in doo-doo. They kept rolling the dice. Seven, seven, seven. Jonah! What's the dealio, bro? What did you do to make your uppercase G God get so mad? Why is this awful storm come down on us? They demanded, who are you? What is your line of work? Oh, I'm a carpenter. No, 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 uh, I'm a plumber. No, 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 I'm a sailor. No, no, no. Uh, shucks. I'm a prophet. What country are you from? What is your nationality? How low are you riding? What are you carrying? What burdens are so weighting you down that, by the way, aren't your business to carry? Aren't your, your financial pressures not yours? You need to lay them at the feet of Jesus. A novice French expedition was about to climb the 14,000-foot mountain known as Mount Blanc in the, Swiss, in the Swiss Alps. The experienced guide told the inexperienced climbers, you can only take the bare essentials. As the air thins at higher altitudes, even the most innocuous, seemingly light objects increase in difficulty to carry. You can only take the bare essentials. However, everyone say however. A brash and loud Englishman sneered at the direction of the guide. Not wanting to wait for the rest of the group, he set off alone at the trail ahead of the rest of the would-be climbers. About two hours into the hike, the group started to notice objects left along the wayside of the trail. The first of those was a heavy, brightly covered blanket. After a while, they discovered a wheel of cheese and two bottles of wine. After that, there was some expensive, heavy camera equipment. Lucky the Englishman came to his senses and discarded all the objects that would have made the climb unachievable. What are you carrying? What have you rationalized as yours? What have, what have you said, this is mine to carry? This burden that I bear? Can I just tell you, there's a God in heaven who longs to carry it for you. There's a God in heaven that says, come to me, all you who are weary. Number three, the voice of God gets us past the bull loney. 
The voice of God gets us past the baloney. I'm not talking about the head of the cow. I'm talking about the other end. See, the voice of God gets you past the bull. The voice of God just, there's so much bull loney in the world that I want to gag on it. Um, have, have you ever, do you know what it means to be snowed? Is that colloquialism unfamiliar to anybody? If you know what it means to be snowed, give me a wave. Okay, there's about half downtown, about half up on the hill. Okay, here's what it means to be snowed. Uh, if you are a parent or have been a parent of a teenager, give me a wave. Okay? You have a 16-year-old daughter named Jasmine. And Jasmine's a sweet little kid. She's a little bit of a firecracker, but she's a sweet kid. She comes to you, mommy, and she says, Mom, can I go to Alicia's house for a sleepover? We want to have a Bible study and such. Sure, sweetheart. Go have fun. So Jasmine goes to Alicia's house. Mom is scrolling through social media, comes upon this picture of a rave in a warehouse in downtown Sumner. And who's there shaking her thing? Jasmine! She tries to call Jasmine, Mom does, for like three hours. And out of her mind with worry, fear, rage, she calls the police. There's a search. They can't find the rave. In the morning, <laughs> mom's gone sleepless. Jasmine calls mom. Hi, mommy. Where have you been? I was doing a Bible study at Alicia's. Then why did I see you on Instagram shaking your thing? Oh, no, mommy. They can do so much with social media. They can just trick photography and put people's faces on things. Mommy, we read from the book of Jonah. It was such a wonderful story. Snow job. Have you ever attempted to be snowed? Have anybody ever tried to snow you? People that have been, uh, experienced adultery and divorce have been attempted to be snowed. Oh, no, I don't know why, you know, that receipt says, I, I, I have no idea. I, I don't, that must have been a typographical bank error. I don't, I don't know where that came from. Do you know what the worst snow job is? Self-snow. When we snow ourselves and take no responsibility for the consequences of our life's realities. When we say, oh, it's not my fault I'm in porn. My dad showed me porn at age 13 and I got hooked and it's all his fault. Oh, it's not my fault that I overeat because my mom was a horrible cook and didn't do nutrition and she just fed us garbage all the time. Oh, it wasn't my fault that I steal stuff because my parents put me in the care of my uncle who was a kleptomaniac and taught me how to boost cars when I was 17 and it's all their fault and his fault why I'm a kleptomaniac and I'm in prison. It's not my fault. It's, somebody else. it's always somebody else's fault. Yep. Self-snow. Do you know what I like about Psalm 51? After King David had sex with another man's wife, got her pregnant, then killed her husband, and then the jig came up and the light came on, he could have blamed the woman for bathing in the nude above his palace. He could have blamed somebody else. But you know what he says in Psalm 51? Against you and you alone have I sinned, O Lord. See, the word of God, the voice of God, just gets you past the bull. Do you want to be free? you want to have life and levity? Just own your stuff. Own it. Take responsibility for what you say and what you do and where you go. Take your responsibility. Here's why I love Jonah. He's a man's man. Jonah was no little wimp. Check this out. Jonah answered, I'm a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord and the uppercase G, God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. And the sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them that he was running away from the Lord. Wouldn't you have loved to hear that conversation? Hey, what's your name? My name is Abdul. Cool, where are you going? Yeah, I'm going to Tarsus because we're going to start a new, you know, a dot-com thing there. We got this, this factory and we're going to try to sell goods for cheaper. Oh, cool, what's your name? My name is um, Gazilio. And Gazilio, what are you going to do? Oh, we're going to go to Tarsus because we want to just see if we can just, um, you know, plant some crops because the soil is really good there. Hey, what's your name? Yeah, my name is Jonah. I'm running from God. Yeah. Huh. Ah, who's he? I don't know. <laughs> go take a nap in the bottom of the boat. There he told him, he's running. Then they groaned. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do to make the storm stop? I like what Jonah said. Now, I would not have said what Jonah said. Here's what I would have said. Let's just have a Bible study. 
Why don't we just get on our knees and pray to the uppercase G God, the one true God, the real one. And let's just ask him for mercy. (laughs) Now look what Jonah says. Throw me into the sea and it will become calm again. I know this terrible storm. Let's say these words out loud together. Ready? I want to train you and prepare you for the future. Ready? Here we go. Is all my fault. Honey, I'm sorry our marriage is bad. It's all my fault. I'm sorry we're having sex outside of marriage. Not you. It's on me. I need to set the cadence. It's all my fault. Not the economy's fault that I made bad investments. It's all my fault. I own it. Now, if I'm the sailors on the boat, here's what I'm doing. Grab a leg. (laughs) Chuck him. Throw him. Throw him over. (laughs) Now, check out these sailors, though. Check them out. Instead, the sailors rode even harder to get to the, get the ship to land, but the stormy sea was too violent. Because here's what God says. Yeah, now, now, roll all you want to. That joker works for me, ain't doing my job. <sighs> you ain't getting closer. And they couldn't make it. They couldn't make it. See, the voice of God just gives it to us straight. The voice of God ain't gonna dance. Well, I, I kind of get to decide, you know, which gender I want to have sex with because, you know, it's just, you know, it's just I was made that way. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, you know, here's the deal. Uh, I, I, I just think that if I want to take Coke and just snort it just to help me get over the edge, uh, that's, it's my body. I get to, uh, yeah, I know. See, the Bible says you are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. See, we can dance all day long. I I, I know I've offended about like maybe 20% of the room. I I just, I'm more afraid of what God thinks than what you think. I'm just telling you right now, I'm living by the absolute word of God because I've been alive long enough to know that if you live by God's voice, he will help you need to get to where you get to. Now, I'm not hating on anybody that's a drug addict. I'm not hating on anybody that's gay. I'm not hating on anybody that's transvestite. I'm not hating on anybody that's blah, 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 blah. I love everybody. Roger loves everyone. And nothing to do with my love for you if you're finding your way. But I'm not going to change the standard to make you feel better about you. That's loveless, not loving. Yeah. You say that. Do you have any gay friends? Yes, I do. I have a lot of gay friends. Oh, you don't have any transgender? Yes, I do have transgender. Yes, I do. I spend time. I recreate with them. I'm not judging anybody. I'm representing Yahweh, Jehovah God, the voice of God, because I love you. That's it. See, the voice of God just gets you past the bull. Voice of God gets you past the bull. Hey, just because I'm not gay doesn't mean I don't sin and have struggles. And my sin isn't greater than their sin. It's just all sin. I'm not going to redefine it so I can feel better about me. Well, God's going to let me masturbate because he knows it's better than having sex with another woman. Bull. I love you. I'm not going to take the low road for you to make you happy. Well, let's just talk about this easy believism gospel. Let's have a little kitty and let's just pat it and not make anybody upset. Let's say what everybody wants to hear. Garbage. Enough. <laughs> When's the last time you ever heard a pastor say that in church? <laughs> yeah, like never. Been nice knowing you. That's okay. Because here's the fourth point of my message. <laughs> I've prepared for you. Did I mention my IQ is 147? Legitimately. The voice of God has a plan B. The voice of God has plan B arrangements. I'll say this again. I I love this. The voice of God has plan B arrangements. When I gave my heart to Jesus at age 18, I knew, I heard the voice of God say, go to Bible school go to seminary, prepare to be a pastor. Problem. The only pastors I knew were poor or nerds. Could not see myself being either. 
So I run off to Missouri to play football because I want to go to the NFL. I had a full ride football scholarship. You know what I did? Took out student loans so I could buy a car and new clothing. <laughs> Carried $30,000 of school debt into my marriage <laughs> when I didn't have to. That's smart. I had a compound fracture in my shoulder. Met a girl there named Krista Montgomery from Moore, Oklahoma. She broke my heart. Not only did I do it one year, I went back for a second dose. So I came with a broken shoulder, a broken heart, and a broken checkbook. <laughs> do you know what God's plan B was for me? To get me back to plan A. Do you know what God's plan C was for me? To get me back to plan A. So here's my question. How far down the alphabet do you want to go? <laughs> God has a plan A for you. Do you want to know what it is? God wants to bless you. God wants to keep you. God wants to prosper you. God wants you to have a great dating life. God wants you to have a great marriage. He wants you to have a great sex life inside of your marriage. God wants you to have a great career. God wants you to have wonderful children. God wants you to sleep with peace. God wants you to be free of meds. God wants you to have no addictions. God wants you to laugh and joy and smile and skip down the sidewalk. That's God's plan A for us all. How far down the alphabet you want to go? How far down the alphabet you want to go? When I was 17 years old and had my 30 6 in my lap and then under my chin and my toe on the trigger about to blow my head off because I couldn't deal with being molested for six years. I couldn't deal with the alcoholism I was in. I couldn't deal with the life, that fact that my life was falling apart. And I wanted to end my life. I was at Z. And the Holy Spirit of God captured my heart and he got me back to plan A. And then I went to plan C. What the heck? Hey, God ain't mad at you. God didn't hate you. God loves you. But you gotta hear his voice. His voice is pure. His voice is clean. His voice has hope. Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's uppercase G, God. Oh, Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin and hold us responsible for his death. Oh, Lord, you have sent this storm upon us for your own good reasons. Then the sailors picked up Jonah and threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power, and they offered a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. Isn't it interesting that Jesus was in the tomb for three days and three nights, and Jonah was in the fish for three days and three nights? Make no assumption that because your life doesn't look like someone else's that God isn't pleased with you. God has a plan A. How far down the alphabet you want to go? Because God will wait. God will outwait you until your breath is gone and you're in the ground. Now it's too late. Now your decision's been made and you made that over a lifetime. How many know that life tomorrow isn't guaranteed? You could be 17 years old and you could die tomorrow in a car wreck. You could be 22, constrict cancer and be gone in months. You could be in your 30s, walk across the sidewalk, drunken driver takes you out. You could be in your 40s, have a climbing accident and disappear from the earth. Your, pro your life is not promised. What you have is now. What you have is here. What you have is close. You have the love of God, the care of God, and the forgiveness of God. So you've just heard the voice of God. What will you now do with what you have now heard? I want to invite you, if you would, to bow your head and close your eyes before Jesus. Oh, dear one, dear precious love of the Lord, you're loved by God. He loves you. God doesn't want you to be in a mess. He wants you to do what he tells you to do so you don't live in that reality and paradigm. Some of you within the sound of my voice, 
Jesus lives beside you but not inside you. And that eight inches of, of distance and geography will literally keep you out of heaven. You say you believe in God, that's great, so does the devil. He has a destination, it's not in heaven. See, Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock, and if anyone will open up their door and come in, let me come in, I will live in them and be their friend, not beside, but in. Maybe once upon a time you used to follow God, but by your choosing, you walked away from the relationship. Pastor, are you saying I can lose my salvation? Nope, can't lose your salvation, but you can give it away if you don't want it anymore. For some of you, it's time to come home now. Time to come home. In a moment, you're gonna hear the word now. When I say now, if you want Jesus to come into your heart or return to you and have you return to him, you need to put your hand high into the air to serve notice to hell that you will be his marionette no more. You'll be his puppet no more. And your hand to heaven goes, God, here I am, part of your collective. And then to yourself, you're saying, I am going to follow God and listen to his voice. You ready for the word now? Here it comes. It's coming in three. It's coming in two. It's coming in one right now. Put the hand high into the air and say, yes, here I am, Pastor. Come on, lift your hand up high. God bless you. Come on. Hey, who else? Who else? Who else? Come on, who else? Lift your hand up high. Yeah, I see you in the balcony over here in the front, up on the balcony. There's South Hill. Those watching online, chat in. Tell us what you've done. Welcome to the family of God, yo. I want us to pray this out loud together. Come on, say this. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sin. I am now clean. I am now brand new. Help me to follow you and your voice. Now with your heads bowed and eyes closed, followers of Jesus. Have you drifted from his voice? Is your load super heavy? Are you riding low? Carrying things? Are you blaming somebody else? and you just need to own so you can be free? Do you want to be able to hear the voice of God tenderly? If that's you right now, I want you to lift up your hand because I want to pray for you. Come on, this is no joke, no joke, right, right now. Hands up. Father, you see hands all over our campuses, all over our online campuses. God, I pray that you would bless and cover and anoint every single one of our people. And now, great God, I pray that there would be a new birth, a rebirth, a ca- a, just a catalytic explosion of life and energy and vitality. I want to invite us now to stand to our feet. Here we go. We're going to worship this out. Let's take this song to our heart.